questions? Sure, again, uh, thanks for coming out. Um, just quickly, some thoughts on Iowa. You know, obviously when you watch the tape, uh, you know, we won the first quarter 7-3, they won the third quarter 10-7, and the fourth quarter 7-0. Um, but a 31-point differential in the second quarter kind of tells the story. Um, and it kind of took place after one of our emotional leaders of our team um, was injured. And for us, you know, as we develop our team, you know, that's one of the things, as you guys know, I always talk about, it's got to be a next man up mentality. Um, I thought when Dante went out, uh, obviously the fumble on that play is what started um, our downward spiral in there in the second quarter, and we never really recovered from it. Um, I think we're a better team than what we showed on Friday night. Um, there's no doubt about that. We're sitting here four and one um, after five games. Um, so I don't think there's a need for us to panic. Um, I got a lot of confidence in this team. This is a, a team that I feel uh, is still together, that plays very well together, that understands the standard that we've set and knowing that we didn't meet the standard on Friday night. And I'm, I'm confident that we'll respond the right way, both as coaches and players. Um, <clears throat> you know, going on to Ohio State, obviously another tremendous challenge. Uh, we're in the conference play. Uh, they're one of the top teams in our conference year in and year out. They've got an explosive offense. I see a defense that has improved uh, the last couple of games here. Uh, you know, they got receivers that create explosive plays down the field. You know, their front seven on defense has done a really good job all season long, and, and I expect it to be a tough game for us. Um, I know our players are excited about the opportunity to go on the road uh, and play a good team um, and have an opportunity to try to respond and play to the standard that we set. Um, we got to put last Friday in our rearview mirror and not let it affect us moving forward. And I expect us to do that. We got a great opportunity. Um, the captains for this week is uh, uh, Jalen Duncan, Darrell Chami, and uh, Nick Cross will lead us up into Columbus um, to hit the Dante Demas. Uh, Dante is out season ending uh, knee surgery here this week. Um, obviously very devastating for a player that uh, I felt was playing at a very high level. Um, but what that means for us is that the next man has to kind of pick up some of the slack that losing a player of Dante's caliber. And I'm sure Dante will do everything he can, as he said, going up into the tunnel to come back, um, whether it's here at Maryland or uh, hopefully at the next level. So with that, I'll open it up with any questions. Thanks, Matt. you have questions, we're gonna mic it <clears throat> Coach, it feels like they've had this ridiculous succession of quarterbacks the last couple of years. Haskins two years ago, Fields last year, this year, uh, C.J. Stroud. How does he differ from them? What makes him such a tough player to maintain? Yeah, you know, um, very strong arm, accurate thrower, and, and has very good functional athleticism for a young player. Um, he's a guy that I think will continue to get better and better for them. Uh, but he's definitely the guy that makes it go. He makes pretty good decisions with the football, gets it out quickly. And uh, I think he's very uh, a mixture of both Haskins and Fields. I mean, you don't see him necessarily run maybe like we saw out of Justin Fields, but he has the ability to do that. Uh, you see him make all the throws that he needs to make to the field, the boundary throws, the big post. Um, so for a young player, I've been very impressed with what I've seen on tape. For, for clarification, was Dante's an ACL or was it something else? You know, I normally don't get into all the, the specifics of it, but I know he's having something repaired uh, on his knee. Um, I think once, you know, because he's still, he's flying down, I think, to Birmingham to have them look at it down there. And then once they make a determination, I'll have a little more information, but he hasn't gone down just yet. Um, and then, I'm just curious, I think you said after the game, he is not to let one loss turn into another one. Is there anything as a staff that you look for in your players to kind of see that they're they're not going to let that happen? Yeah, it's how we return to practice. You know, obviously, you know, that 48-hour rule when the game is over for us, we don't get back until Monday um, this week because we you know, obviously we were able to get a day off Sunday, which we hadn't had the week before. And so we put it behind us yesterday at our 2.15 or 3 o'clock team meeting. And once we took the field yesterday afternoon in preparation for Ohio State, you know, we have to turn the page and turn it pretty quickly, especially, you know, with what we got coming up the, the road here in Columbus this weekend. And so 
uh, what we'll, the way we're able to engage it is how we practice Monday through Friday. And to me, that's our standard that we've set, that we've got to put the work in, that we'll have tough, hard practices, that we'll demand that we do things with the detail necessary. Um, we continue to stress on the fact that good teams don't beat themselves, which when you look at last week, and, and I, I give Iowa a ton of credit for uh, the job they did, creating some of the turnovers and some of the things that happened. But a lot more of it is on us as a team. And, and to me, that's what we, we'll have to get corrected this week. <clears throat> hey, Coach, um, I, you talked about not beating yourselves. I know uh, Talia had a pretty rough game with the five interceptions. Um, coming off that film study and just talking to him, what is he doing to try to you know, correct that and not, and not uh, beat himself uh, and, uh, and help you guys win? Yeah, you know, uh, again, he, he's played pretty good football for us up into that game. and. I do think, you know, as I look back on it, and again, we're not into excuses or, or, or complaining or, or, or bitching about how things transpired, but to me, that game, I'm gonna put it as an anomaly. It's not the standard, it's not what we've seen. And so um, what, what I would hope to see Talia continue to do is the things I saw him do the four weeks prior, um, where, where he took great care of the football. And, you know, losing Dante uh, because of the, the connection those two had, I think, affected him. I told the story when I walked out on the field and Dante was down, he was the one guy that was on the field with me holding his helmet. And so I think when he came back, maybe pressed a little bit, um, obviously with the onslaught that took place in the second quarter, you know, one of the things we try to pattern our behavior is not to be scoreboard watchers because it creates anxiety. And I think there were times where he tried to force things or force plays or, you know, do too much to try to get it all back and you're never gonna get it all back. You gotta play one play at a time and maybe got away from that a little bit. So uh, I got a lot of confidence in him. Uh, as I said, I think uh, Friday night was an anomaly for him and for us as a team. And uh, we got it out, our system hopefully, and now we'll play winning football the way we need to play to give ourselves a chance to, to be competitive in games against good teams like we got this week. How is the health of the linebacker crew for this week? Um, you know, it's a position that's been uh, depleted with obviously losing Fanage Gote. We lost Brandon Jennings last week. Uh, Brandon's practicing. He got out there yesterday, a little bit yesterday. So, again, I think he will be a game time decision this week, depending on how he comes along. Mm -hmm. Ruben Hippolyte was able to play, you know, the whole game last week, and then you know we were able to get Jeremy Spragans and uh, Amal McCullough. So I mean, we don't have the depth that we started out with uh, at that inside linebacker position, um, but you know we've got enough guys there that, that can play winning football for us. Is a uh, Sida Smith uh, injured as Osita, well? Osita, Osita has been banged up, um, and, and as of right now, Osita's still working back, but he has been banged up the last couple of weeks. Um, I know you're only looking at this one this week, but when you look at kind of the Big Ten, this division particularly, um, you know, it makes the schedule really hard, but in some ways does it give you opportunities to show that Maryland is taking a step forward and uh, competitive with, with those type programs? Yeah, you're exactly right. We're not looking beyond this. Uh, we do know the Big Ten East, this side of the division is a, a, a tough division, you know, having been in this league. Really competitive teams, but the Big Ten as a whole is. And so, you know, anytime you get into conference play, for us, these are great barometers to see where we are. I mean, again, uh, I'm happy where we sit um, at four and one. Um, I think these are great uh, exam or great opportunities for us to really gauge how far we've come as a program. And as I said, Friday hopefully uh, is an anomaly for us, and that we can go play competitive, winning football. Um, by doing the things that we set as our standards, and I'm looking forward to that opportunity against Ohio State. Thank you, Coach. Coach, you guys have already won on the road this year. Champaign is not Columbus, so what what is it like going into the horseshoe, uh, leading young men <laughs> with that crowd? Yeah, I think the big thing for us is controlling the things we can control. Um, you know, for us, when you go play on the road, it focus, it forces you to really focus on the job at hand that you have to get accomplished, and you're not able to rely on the elements. Uh, you know, our crowd was great there in the first half of, of our game. 
uh, there against Iowa, and uh, to have that type of support is great. But what you've got to do is rely on your your fundamentals and your training when you go on the road, and, and you kind of got to band together. And then you know, for us, the key is in, in road games like that is to get it into the fourth quarter. And then when you do that, anything can happen. And, and I think we train to win in the fourth quarter. We train for four quarter games, and when you go on the road, the key is to try to get it to that point. Thanks.